How's it going guys? Router out of 33 here and I'm doing another video on some of these iPhone app templates. So a couple of my older videos uh, highlight the myapptemplates.com app templates and I'm actually talking about another one today. So if you haven't checked out the old videos, uh, they're basically a really easy way to get started with iOS programming. And the cool thing that I'm going to be talking about today are the new iOS 7 templates. So if you guys don't know, iOS 7 is very different from the previous versions of iOS. And updating to iOS 7 is a lot harder than you would really imagine. There's all kinds of new functionality to understand. There are a lot of new APIs, new methods, and a lot of them have been deprecated or killed. And so you can't use the same ones that you might have been using in the past. Now there's lots of, lots of new interface guidelines and Apple's following these really strictly. So they want your iOS 7 apps to look a certain way and the app will get rejected if you don't follow them. This new change isn't just a visual change but it's a change in structure, layout, and app flow. And the best part about these templates is that that's already done for you. And so I'm going to take a look at the taxi template, but basically these templates follow the same theme, if you will, as the other templates that I've highlighted, but they're iOS 7 ready. Uh, this is the taxi template, and there's actually a couple that are already ready for iOS 7, which is pretty cool. They're already programmed in the way that Apple wants. So there's not a harsh transition to the programming style that you need to learn. Uh, you're pretty much ready to go right away. Another huge pro is that they're already 64-bit uh, and iPhone 5S ready, and that's huge. They're already formatted and really good looking for iOS 7, which is a huge pro. And the last thing is that they have more functionality built in than ever. And so if you want to get started on an app, you have a great idea, but you just don't know where to begin. Now, these are definitely a great place to start. So I'm going to move my way over to Xcode here. All right, so here we are in Xcode 5. So I'm going to be taking a look at the Taxi app today. And the Taxi app is an iOS 7 ready app template, which is really cool. Um, it's already beautifully themed. It already has tons of functionality in place and it runs very smooth. Not to mention it's iOS 7 ready as well as 64-bit and iPhone 5S ready. So I'm gonna run it real quick so we can take a look at what it looks like. Very nice looking splash screen. And this is the first screen, and it looks a little bit different than iOS 6, and that's just because the user guidelines have changed. So you click the Get a Taxi app, you get this nice map view. Uh, it's the Apple Maps based view. You've got very nice blurred toolbars, um, the nice clear top bar, borderless buttons, really uh, you know flat, smooth fonts, and it's just a really well designed app. And the cool thing is, is that you can take this and even though, you know, right now it's just a taxi app, you can mold it to whatever needs you have. So if you want to make, uh, find my friends app, find a restaurant app, find who knows what app, the options are endless, um, but you've got all kinds of options. So it's just a really well thought out design and it's really good looking um, all the way down to the receipt. I mean, look at, look at how good this looks. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to build onto this contacts tab. And if you look here in my debug area, it shows me which contact I selected. And you could end up passing that to, say, the phone app or into some sort of database so you could save your favorite taxi drivers or taxi companies uh, within this app. This is more or less just to demonstrate how easy it is to add something new. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to add the libraries that we need to work with add a library to an Xcode project in Xcode 5. What you're going to want to do is to click the name of your project up here, this blue guy, click the build phases from the tabs, and link binary with libraries. From here you'll see a plus, click that, and we're going to add addressbook.framework and addressbookui.framework. Okay, next we're going to work on our view controller implementation file. So in order to access the different tabs that the menu provides for us, we need to work from our menu view controller. So we are in the menu view controller.h, which we can find by going to taxi, classes, views, menu, and menu view controller.h. Once we're in here, we're going to need to add the people picker delegate to our interface line. So what we're going to do is AB people picker navigation controller delegate. 
And if this doesn't pop up for you, and that's because you need to import your address book UI and your address book UI.h at the top file. It's very important. Now we need to add an IB action, which we'll call show picker. And we can leave it ID and sender. Okay, so now we're in our implementation file. And what we're going to do is we're going to implement the method that we just defined in our header file. So to do that, we're going to say IB action show picker, and it's already in the autofill area for us because we've already chosen it. And here we are. So when we show the picker, what we're going to do is we're going to create an AB people picker, whoops, people picker navigation controller. We'll name it picker creative equals AB people picker navigation controller alloc. And we need to initialize it. Now we need to set the delegate. So if you know what a delegate is, that's great. If not, just follow the same line. And as per the usual, all of this code will be included in the description to download. Lastly, we need to present the view controller. Present view controller. We'll call it the picker. Animated, why not? Nothing on completion. Okay, so here we are. So this is our show picker method, and it's basically what pops out the uh, address book picker that we're so familiar with. Now, there are also a couple of other methods, and those ones I'm actually just going to copy and paste in. I'm not going to type them all out because they're a little bit longer and a little bit more cumbersome. And they'll just take up some time. Okay, so here they are. One thing that I'm going to point out is this block of code here, and this is basically taking the person that you fetched and putting it into an NS log. And the reason I do this is to display how easy it is to get the data from the address book. Now, obviously, it's not that useful if NS log just tells you what person you picked, but presumably you could pass this into your app and do something cool with it. Now, lastly, we actually need to call the method that we just wrote. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll to the bottom here, and this is where the app basically listens to see which button you're pressing. So it, it's based all upon the menu cell row. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually add an extra line in there and say else if cell row whoops, is equal to four. And that's the row of the contact. So we'll make an NS log just for fun. And we'll say contacts launched. And this is just, I like to put NS logs in my app so that I can see what's going on. And then all I have to do is self and show picker self. Cool. So that's basically the code that we need. And we're going to build the app real quick and see how it works. So here we are. And we're going to click the contacts button. And when you click this contacts button, up springs your contacts. And in the NS log, you see this contacts launched. I'm going to click on Taxi Tim here. And it doesn't really look like it do does anything. It just closes. But in the NS log, it says user selected is Taxi Tim. And as I said earlier, the reason that that is included in there and really the only purpose at all is just to show you that the data that you're getting from the address book really is being passed to something else. So. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, hopefully it made a little bit of sense, and you can get the code that I said I would include in the description, that'll be available to download from my website. The link to the Apple documentation is also included. I've also been aware of a potential sale that's going on, so it sounds like there's going to be a three app templates for the price of one sale on these iOS 7 templates, which is a great deal. If that's the case, I'll include a link in the description for that. As usual, if you have any questions, um, concerns, comments, anything like that, leave a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you. So take it easy, guys.